The Volkswagen Golf has been on sale since 1974 and over 33 million have been sold. Why is it so popular? Because it's a great all-rounder and offers everything that most people will ever need from a car. But it is up against some stiff competition these days from the likes of the Skoda Octavia and Audi A3. So should you still buy a Golf? Well, in this review, we will answer that question, starting with how well it handles on UK roads. And if you're thinking about buying a Volkswagen Golf and you don't want to haggle, go to our new car deals section of whatcar.com where we can help save you some money. Going through the Golf's entire engine range would take a long time, so here's the highlights. You can go for a 1 litre, 1.4, 1.5 or 2 litre petrol, then there's 1.6 and 2 litre diesels, as well as a plug-in hybrid and even a full electric. Our favourite though is the 1.4 litre petrol. In this car we've got the 1 litre petrol which is actually quite nippy thanks to its turbocharger. Although when you put your foot down, it's not the best sounding engine and luckily the other engines in the range are nicely hushed. The Golf rides over lumps and bumps in the road better than most cars in this class. Although lower powered versions are fitted with less sophisticated suspension, which does take the edge off its overall comfort, although never to the point of being uncomfortable. This is a car which inspires real driver confidence. There's very little body lean in the corners and plenty of grip, meaning you can drive on country B roads at a fair old pace without the car feeling unstable. There's plenty of adjustment in the seat and steering wheel, so people of all shapes and sizes should be able to find a comfortable driving position. If you'd like adjustable lumbar support, don't go for the entry S model, you'll have to go for SE and above. However, all models do get this centre armrest, although for me it's probably a little bit too far away. Visibility is excellent and if you'd like any help with parking then again SE gets you parking sensors front and rear or you can spec them on the S trim level model. You can also get reversing camera and autonomous parking is on the options list. The Golf's touchscreen is responsive and the menus are easy to figure out. Plus you get these buttons down the side which are also touchscreen and they give you access to the most popular features. It's not quite as intuitive as the BMW 1 Series or Audi A3's rotary dial system. However, the Volkswagen touchscreen is one of the best offerings around, even if it can be a little difficult to hit the correct icon when on the move. If you go for SE trim level or above, you get Apple CarPlay and MirrorLink, which allows you to use your smartphone's apps via the screen, which means you don't need to pay extra to have built-in sat-nav. However, if you would like the in-cars sat-nav, then go for SE navigation or opt for the Discover Navigation Pro system, which gets you a 9.2 inch touchscreen with gesture controls. Not only has the Volkswagen Golf got masses of leg and headroom up front, but there's also tons of storage. Decent sized door bins, two cup holders here, another storage space there, and underneath the armrest, you've guessed it, more storage space, and a chilled glove box. And if you go for SE trim level or above, you get a hidden drawer, underneath the passenger seat and somewhere in the sunglasses. It's a similar story here in the back with plenty of room for tall adults. In fact, if you're six foot, you can sit behind someone who is equally as tall and have enough head and leg room. However, add a third passenger and that's when things start to get a bit cramped. So if space really is something that you're looking for back here, go for an Octavia instead. There's plenty of room in the Golf's boot for a couple of large suitcases or a weekly shop. And most models come with this false floor, which means you can have two separate compartments, reduce the load lip, and you can move it down like that to create a little bit more space. And if you need even more room, you can drop the rear seats. You don't. 
The cheapest S trim level is a little bit stingy, so we'd go for at least an SE, which adds automatic headlights and wipers, smartphone connectivity and adaptive cruise control. Take it one step further and go for the SE Navigation, which adds sat-nav. Whichever model of Golf you choose, it should be affordable to live with, especially if you go for the one litre, because that returned 50 miles per gallon in our real-world MPG tests. If you're buying a Volkswagen Golf, you'll also benefit from its strong resale value. It costs about the same to buy as a Vauxhall Astra or Ford Focus, but it's better equipped and will be worth more when it's time to sell on. Thanks to its breadth of talents, the Volkswagen Golf remains one of the best family cars around. It's competitively priced, practical and good to drive. Now remember, if you're thinking of buying a Volkswagen Golf, go to whatcar.com, go to our new car deal section where we can help save you some money. There's also our 16 point review and don't miss another video, hit subscribe.